MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Amit Dada, School of Management, George Mason University. In this segment, we will see how to determine the appropriate sample size that should be used when one is developing a confidence interval for the population mean. The problem setting that we will use to illustrate the process is stated as follows. So how large a sample would you need to determine the average mileage of passenger cars on the road so that you are 95% sure that you are within plus or minus 1000 miles of the true mean. So that's the problem statement. Let's put it in a graphical form here. So the population that we are dealing with in this problem setting is all cars on the road and the population parameter that I want to estimate is mu the average mileage of all these cars on the road and notice that the population standard deviation is not known so to estimate a uh, or rather to determine a confidence interval for the population mean we would take a sample of size small n that's the purpose of this exercise to determine what that n should be once i have the sample i would determine the sample mean which is the sample statistic that is to be used here and based on the sample mean x bar i would come up with a confidence interval for mu so i was i would end up with a statement like this i am 95 percent sure that mu lies between x bar plus or minus 1000 miles now uh, <clears throat> we know from earlier discussion that if the sample size is large then the sample mean x bar is normally distributed with the mean of mu which is the unknown parameter that I'm trying to estimate and the standard deviation of the sample mean in other words Sigma of X bar is given by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size n so these are all the little pieces at uh, in play here while we are trying to determine the confidence interval for mu also from prior discussion of confidence interval, we know that there are three things, three items that are being traded off in this process. And they are the sample size, margin of error, and the confidence interval. And the qualitative nature of the trade-off is fairly easy to deduce. For instance, if I want to be fairly precise, in other words, I want to be close to the unknown parameter that I want to estimate, which means that margin of error is small. And I also want to be very sure about my inference. In other words, I want to be fairly confident, quite confident that I am within this margin of error. Then, of course, the sample size has to be large. On the other hand, if my time or budget does not allow a large sample size, in other words, n is small, okay, but I still want to be very sure, 95% sure, 99% sure about my confidence interval, then the margin of error will end up being large. In other words, the, the more sure I want to be, the larger the margin of error provided the sample size remains the same. So these three things are being traded off. Let's see what that quantification ends up being. We know the qualitative nature of the trade-off. Okay? So in this problem setting, I want to be 95% sure of my confidence interval. In other words, as we said, I want to be 95% sure that mu lies within the interval that I determine. Going back to the Sampling distribution, what this means is, here you see the margin of error of 1,000 miles, plus 1,000 miles, minus 1,000 miles, okay? So, if I want to be 95% sure that the population mean lies within the margin of error, that's basically saying that the area of the normal distribution under the uh, this sampling distribution between the margin of error limits should be 95%. In other words, the yellow shaded portion should be 95%. So let's use the Excel built-in function. If I want to be 95% sure, norm S inverse of 0.975. So I hope you remember where we got the 0.975 from. Excel, the built-in function, norm S inverse, requires that you provide it the full area to the left of the limit that you're trying to determine. So I'm trying to determine what this upper limit should be in terms of the uh, confidence interval. And I want the yellow shaded portion to be 95%. The left tail 
is 2.5%. So you add those two together, you get 0.975. So norm S inverse of 0.975 turns out to be 1.96 standard deviations. In other words, this 1,000 miles, I want to be within 1,000 miles of the unknown mean. This 1,000 miles is has to be equal to 1.96 standard deviations. So how much is one standard deviation of X bar, which is the statistic that I'm using to come up with the confidence interval? So 1,000 miles is equal to 1.96 standard deviations multiplied by how large one standard deviation is in this case, which is sigma divided by square root of n, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And we are ultimately trying to work our way towards what this n should be. And you can see that the stumbling block here is the unknown sigma. Okay, And in determining the sample size, this turns out to be the biggest challenge. So one of the ways one goes about determining this unknown sigma is to take one fourth of the range. So let's see what that calculation might be. In this case, that's what I've put, put it as a sidebar. So I know that uh, in, the, the, in terms of the cars that are on the road, I know some of them are new cars, so their mileage is zero. And uh, how about the upper limit? So here's my logic. Um, I, I'll, I know from uh, you know, uh, data from uh, various uh, uh, automobile journals that people tend to keep their car about eight years or so, and they drive about 12,000 miles a year. So I would say about 96,000 miles before they turn in their cars and get another one. These I'm, We're talking about passenger cars here. So my logic is that the range, mileage range, range of mileage of cars on the road, passenger cars on the road, is between 0 and 96,000 miles. I know that's not perfectly accurate. There are cars with two, 300,000 miles on them. But my educated guess is that the range of miles uh, on passenger cars on the road is between 0 and 96,000. If that's the case, if my estimate is reasonably okay, then my estimate of the population standard deviation is one-fourth of that, which is 24,000 miles. Now, why one-fourth? You remember for the uh, the empirical rule says that for the standard, uh, for the normal distribution, uh, uh, roughly 68% of values lie within one standard deviation. Okay, so um, half of 68% is 34. So uh, just as an approximation, we take the range, divide it up into four buckets, your four quartiles, and one of those buckets, the 24,000 miles, is an approximation of what that sigma uh, uh, is. So I end up with an approximation of sigma being 24,000 miles. With that approximation, I'll plug it back in here. So my 1,000 miles, which is the margin of error that I would like to have in my estimation, is 1.96 standard deviations so it is equal to 1.96 multiplied by 24,000 divided by square root of n now if you flip around some of these numbers so you take n over to the left side and square it bring 1,000 over to the right hand side and square that and just a little bit of uh, numerical manipulation you will find that n is equal to 1.96 squared multiplied by 24,000 squared divided by 1,000 squared. It ends up being roughly 2,213. So that's the sample size I should use. So the net result of this exercise is that if I want to be 95% sure that I'm within plus or minus 1,000 miles of the true mean, then my sample size should be about 2,213. And as you can see, the the difficulty, the hurdle that you're going to have, have to overcome is getting a handle on what the population standard deviation is. And there are a number of different ways to go about approximating it. Uh, one, of course, I've just shown you uh, is to take the range and divide it by four. And you uh, heard me talk about uh, the approximate logic behind doing that. Or you could conduct a small pilot study, just pick a few cars off the, uh, off the road and see what their standard deviation is. Or just use some, uh, use your best judgment, uh, as the case may be. In other words, you have to beg, borrow, or steal, do something to get an estimate of this sigma. That is what will be your biggest practical hurdle. But in this exercise, you have seen that once you know what the population standard deviation is, how sure you want to be, and how precise you want to be. Once you know those three pieces, then you can go about computing the 
size of the sample that you need in order to uh, develop the confidence interval for the population mean.